Hello and welcome to Up to Speed on this Monday, November 8th. We are live from the Leadership Forum. Leaders, it's good to be with you. Um, Folks, what's wonderful about this, of course, is uh, as you'll see uh, in some of the video cutaways here, we've got our leaders here. We've got our leaders also joining us virtual, just like you as well. Uh, and in many ways, it is it is the future of work, of course. And it's great to see so many of our leaders here. We are uh, safely distanced. Uh, we have our masks as well. Uh, but um, let's go ahead and get things started. We've got a jam-packed show here, uh, and we've already had a fantastic morning. And uh, and let's bring in uh, the man who loves to photobomb this particular show shot uh, from the great room, uh, Mr. Hans Vesper, crawling through the 5G sign and everything. Give it up for Hans, everybody. Hey, Vanny. Hello. Whoa. Hey, it's good to be with you, sir. Uh, you just went through your opening remarks. Uh, we have some news to share, uh, but what's on your mind? Oh, so much, you know, I'm so happy to be back to up to speed, you know, you sometimes you invite me, sometimes not. Today I'm here, it's so good to be here. I'm glad you got the invite today, yeah, we yeah, really no, needed no, it, you. It came in the mail, it was a little bit late, <laughs> but here I am. Um, okay. So yeah, let's let's go through what you're what you're wanting to share. Uh, we'll get you up on the stage. I, I think I think we got Craig waiting in the wings here to talk yeah. pulse. So a lot to share. But uh, Hans, the floor is yours. Sir. Thank you, thank you, Andy, and to all the B team. It's great to be here. And and of course we're here in the uh, leadership forum uh, where we have our top leaders gathered. Some blue jeansing, which is a new verb I'm using. Uh, and uh, some are uh, here in the room, but uh, we all are together to share uh, and focus on uh, next year. So the, this year, or uh, usually when we have the leadership forum in November, our focus is on uh, the priorities for next year, but also an update on where we stand on Verizon 2.0 and the progress we made. So let me share a couple of things that we have discussed here. I mean, first of all, we discussed a little bit where are we with our four stakeholders, the North Stars that we have. Yeah, we have some challenges. We're not there yet, for sure. When it comes to our shareholders, we have much more to do there. Uh, on the uh, customer side, we have good progress, but we're stagnating a little bit on the customer satisfaction. So we just need to push that up as well. And then if we talk about their employees, yeah, we're gonna share that a little la bit later on with, uh, uh, with Craig here. But you can say that this is so important to see that we continue, that we all feel that we're in the right company with the right purpose and doing the right things, and we feel a belonging here. That's so important to all of us. So we see that, we'll talk about that. And then on the uh, society, which remember when we made our Verizon 2.0 strategy, we had it hanging together with the four stakeholders. And the society piece, we have good, good progress. The team and you all are working and seeing that we are doing responsible business. And that's so important in our society and that we embed it in our strategy. So we've talked a little bit about that. We've also moved in to talk a little bit about, uh, you might remember, the preserve, strengthen and transform. Where are we on all those things that we felt were so important to keep, but also to improve and transform. And I think that, yeah, there are areas which we actually had transformed and done quite a lot. There are certain things we just need to continue to fight even more to make it happen. That has been the discussion, and then talked about the priorities for 2022. Of course, we will have our annual kickoff uh, in the beginning of next year, where we're going, going through per unit what we're doing. But here we're starting talking about them because we need to get them down and see that we're all aligned in the leadership team here about the execution we're doing next year. So that has been, uh, I would say, the main discussion, and then we will continue, of course, in, in the afternoon. And uh, tomorrow, depending where you live, but uh, afternoon, at least here in the US, East Coast, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the five vectors of growth. Because now we have the assets. We have sort of invested heavily with the go-to-market, uh, with our network, with our CBAN acquisition, uh, the, all the deployment we've done, all, over the top applications that we have developed in our different business group, and the balanced sort of approach with different type of platforms to deliver it. So think about the strategies being uh, uh, the network of service, where basically Kyle and the whole NNT and the IT people are building from the data center to the edge of the network as much commonality as possible. Then at the edge, we decide what type of access uh, we are giving our customers. Uh, could be 5G, ultra-wideband, it could be 4G, it could be fiber, it could be Fios, it could be copper, and then we build solution on top of that. Sometimes we do the solution ourselves, sometimes we're partners. That's the whole strategy, and that's where we are in the execution in Verizon Business Group and Verizon Consumer Group. So that's very exciting, and next year, 
is extremely important. It's probably the most critical year in the, in, in the history of Verizon. I think it's going to be, or I'm certain it's going to be, the 22nd year of Verizon. That's what we're going into. That's how important that year is going to be for us with all the investment, all the assets we have. And guys, now the accountability starts with us all over here, all the V-teamers to see that we are leveraging those investments we have done and the investments that have been given by our stakeholders that we can invest and see that that ha all hangs together. So that's sort of what we're going to discuss then. As you know, we always go, we release the pulse result, result first with all of the employees. So tomorrow we're going to talk to, to the leaders a little bit more in depth uh, about some of the results, what we should do more, etc. But clearly that's a little bit of tomorrow. That's what we're talking about here today uh, in general terms. And uh, then as you know, as you already have announced, Andy, we wanted to release the, and talk about the pulse results. Yes, yes, um, and certainly, you know, we talk about this morning, great ideas come from this forum, but great ideas also come from V-teamers everywhere, and the pulse is, that's what it's all about. So let me, before I invite Craig to do, go through it and say that first of all, I mean, I'm extremely grateful, and I think that uh, all the leaders here in the room and, and the ones attending the leadership forum are extremely grateful for all the V-teamers. We have 86% of you responding to this. That tells me something that you guys, or all the V-teamers, think that it's important to raise your voice, but also that we are doing something, to, doing something uh, of it together. Because it's a common work. We're V-teamers, we're a team. Uh, and, and I can only say that it's tough times. There's so much uncertainty, so many things happening. Everything from uh, the market and competition is changing. But not only that, how we see work forward and uh, vaccine mandates and all of that. And we feel that a frustration, some of us, because of everything around it. And I'm frustrated also on the COVID and everything that it's bringing in. And it's not over yet. Uh, even though in some places you can feel it's less of it right now, we can never forget how tough it has been for many of the V-teamers uh, during these times. Uh, and that's why we need to have this dialogue in the pulse. And we get that information from all of you. Uh, and uh, if you answer good or bad, doesn't matter. The most important is that you're answering and giving us the feedback. And, and now I'm going to invite Craig, but Craig and I couldn't be more proud of getting that response rate from our organization about yep. uh, 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 in the Pulse survey that all of them are doing it. But I will yep. ask you to go over a little bit the highlights of the result, and then tomorrow you and I will talk to all the top leaders about what we need to do with it. But ultimately, it's a joint sort of work between us, because if you don't feel that you get sort of feedback from your leaders, you also need to go back to the leaders and say, hey, what about the Pulse? What can we do better? That's also important. But Craig, I give it to you. Thanks so much, Hans. And this is, and, and I do love, one of the things that you've done now quarter after quarter is we're here having these conversations with the senior leadership team, but when it comes to Pulse, we're talking to the entire company, all the V-teamers first. So you are all getting this information at the same time that our senior leader team is, and then we'll go in more detail tomorrow. But let me start with the participation rate, and Hans just mentioned this, but we're really excited about this. We're at 86% this quarter. That's close to the highest we've ever had. And, you know, we would always love this to be a little bit higher. But when you start thinking about people who may be on leave, other things, you're never going to be all the way at 100% because there are people who are going to be out. So we're getting up there where we're getting the vast majority of your, your voices here. And it's important here because this is a chance both for all of us to have our voice heard and also for us to listen. So you see here uh, what I'm sharing with you is the quarter on quarter results over the last two years, and we're right there as high as we've ever been. We've got about 103,000 responses. It's also noteworthy that we have 62,000 verbatim comments that you've put in, and that's fantastic. And we'll be plowing through all that and really getting sort of more of that qualitative commentary that you've, you've brought in. So let's talk about what, uh, what we learned from this. When we look at the results in some of these main questions this quarter, we're really seeing pretty steady state uh, from quarter to quarter. A small dip down on uh, how satisfied you are with Verizon a place to work, but not really statistically significant quarter on quarter. 
The second question I'm really pleased about, it's, it's ticked up just a little bit, but this is a really steady number about my team has made progress on the goal set during our action planning sessions. This is so important because what we see over and over again in the results is that teams who take the pulse results and build action plans off of them, a couple quarters later feel more engaged, right? That's what this is for. It's to get your voice heard, listen to what we're hearing, and then say, how do we improve on the things based on what we've, what we've heard? So that's a really strong number. I'm really pleased to see that, and I'm pleased to see that it continues to tick up. That's, in many ways, one of the most important ones. You see all of these were steadily in the, in the, second, uh, in the, in the third quartile. We want to continue to push those up kind of towards the top decile, but really strong when we're looking at ourselves how we compare with other companies in this space. And then finally, what I want to note on these slides is that we, for the first time, asked three questions about Work Forward, how people are feeling about Work Forward, the information they have, and really good feedback on this, really strong numbers that you're all saying, hey, we've heard this, we hear about how we're going to work going forward. And once again, we say this all the time, but it's really important to say, Work Forward is different than COVID response. COVID gave us the opportunity to stand back and rethink about the ways we work and how to do that optimally. Work Forward is about that future way of working. It's about being the best place to work because we're creating that environment where people can do their best work in the best locations. And we put a lot of work into communicating out, all the training, all the badging, and it's really great to see that you're saying back to us, yeah, we, we've heard that, we feel like we understand that. So great, uh, great feedback there. So what comes next? Tomorrow, those of you who are people leaders will have access to your team's data. I want you to look at that, really digest that, and then start having conversations with your teams, and then build those action plans to say, okay, we've had our voices heard, now let's listen to what was said by our teams. Let's go back and say, now how do we take it to a higher gear? How do we improve based on what the feedback is we've gotten? And come back even stronger next quarter. So, Hans, Andy, let me turn it right back to you. Yes, right. no, but uh, just you and I, Aaron, I think that's okay. important to stress. The plans yep. are important. Uh, I stress the mutual responsibility for all V teamers to create the best workplace you can ever think about and have that conversation with your managers or if your manager having to with your employees. I think that's important. You talked also about the work forward, yep. and I think that how we are thinking with the work forward is, is to create the best place, which is the most sort of relevant place to be. And it's not going to be in one way for equal everyone, because every unit is different, and they need to find their. It's going to be, I would say, more role-based. Work forward is based on its role-based or unit-based, how you're going to done, do it. And, and, and finding the right, the right balance of that, that's going to be important. Yeah, and you know what? I think one of the big takeaways that we want everyone on the V team to hear is we take this really seriously. That's why we're talking to you first about the results. We pay attention to the results. We read the verbatims. And that's why we want to hear your feedback and work forward. This is the way we're going yeah. to work together going forward. And so we want to get your feedback. We're listening to your voice, and we're taking action on it. So this is an incredibly important thing. This is not just an idle exercise. We take what you say very seriously, and we build it into our plans going forward. And we, and we have, of course, evolved. I mean, remember when we start talking about work forward, I think it was more than one year ago. Yep. And of course, everything in our society has changed. I mean, our tools are much better today. We have learned how to work in, in sort of virtual world, et cetera. So we will take care of all of that and see that we create a good environment. But we still believe that there's great merits to being in the office as well. I mean, yep. uh, and meeting your colleagues. I mean, I just see it on myself being here today, meeting some of my fantastic colleagues here. And yep. it is a boost of energy when you do it, but it's days where it might be better to do it virtually. And yeah. that balance we need to strike as a company to get the best outcome of the comp for the company. Yeah, and we, you know, we've put all the work in, Hans. Um, obviously, we've been talking about this for a long time. We've got the technology down. We have the training down so we can work in these distributed ways. But we've done the work in the real estate facilities. We've made them safe. We've made them clean. We've set up so they are they're, they're really established for the new ways of working. So you have that perfect balance. When the office is the right place to be, we've set up to do that. When distributed across video is the right way to do it, we can do that. And yeah. so it, it really allows us all to figure out where's the best place to work on any given project, and it's all optimized for that. No, so that's great. And I, and I know also that Shankar and the team, and of course the team with Tammy and, and Sam, but have worked with the tools that we have all the way from blue jeans and to what we're doing in the IT in order to support yep. even better that way.
way you're working. There's ways to, we can improve over time, but clearly we, we're thinking a lot about this. I just wanted to send that message right. together with this because it's so important for all of us, our work environment and, yeah. and what it means. And remember one thing, many of you V-teamers out there, you never were, went home to work from home because you were in the store or you were uh, uh, working as a field engineer and you had to be out there all the time. And, and yeah. we're extremely grateful for, the, uh, for all of you being in the first line and doing that work because ultimately that's where we meet our customers, that's where our customer is interacting with us. So that balance, we, we just need to continue to understand that we have so many of our great V-teamers going out in the, in the field or in the store every day and doing a, just an enormously important work for us. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Craig. Thank, Thank, Thank you so you. much. Uh, talking about people and organization, uh, you know that uh, 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 for me, you know, it's so important to see that we all are uh, having a, uh, an sort of an energetic and, uh, and a place where you all want to work. And I think that's what we're all thinking about when we do the Pulse. Uh, we have gathered all the leaders uh, now for one and a half day. We have just started. We talk, of course, that we have new leaders coming into the team, who they are, etc., because we always have some new leaders coming in. But we also talked uh, just, uh, recent, just a very short time ago, half an ago, we talked to uh, some of our leaders here about some organization changes we have. And I, I just wanted to share the first time with you guys, all the V-teamers, that uh, Roman and I have for a long time discussed the succession and his desire to step down over time. And we have discussed that for, I would say, one, one and a half year and planning for doing the right thing. The way that Verizon always do. Very organized, very disciplined, that's how we work through it. And I, we have agreed that uh, Ronan will step down at the end of this year. Uh, he will st step down as the uh, head of the consumer group. Uh, he will not go away. He will continue the work. He will be a strategic advisor to me. His title is actually strategic advisor to the CEO. So he will be around supporting with projects, supporting any of the VLC members that need support from him. And he's going to have some tasks like sitting in the, uh, in the board of Yahoo that nowadays is uh, owned by another company, but we have our own uh, ownership in it. So uh, he's going to be around, but I still want to say a couple of words because many of you know Ronan, done a tremendous work, so important in the whole horizon 2.0, creating that customer centricity for consumer group, building on the network and all the uh, solutions we have, and of course, build a very strong team around him, which is uh, diverse and very strong. And that's important when you have this type of succession that we've talked about. So first of all, uh, for all the V-teamers, I would like to thank Ronan for a amazing job and uh, what is done for the consumer group, but it's not goodbye, he's gonna be here, but still I want to thank him, and he still has some work to do before the end of the year, because we have Q4, you know, so the pressure is on him uh, to continue to do a great quarter here as he ends up. Uh, and then finally, who will then succeed? So for you that know, Manon Bruyette, that we brought in, she came in early in the summer, uh, with a long history in, in telecoms, been, being the COO of Verizon Consumer Group and the Deputy CEO. Uh, being able to work close to the team and with Ronan the last couple of, of uh, months here, uh, she will take over in the beginning of next year and lead the Verizon Consumer Group. And I um, couldn't be more pleased for this uh, move and both of them are ready for the next steps. And, uh, and for me it's emotional, for, for one, because Ronan and I have been part of creating Verizon 2.0. He will not go away, I said. And then of course also excited for having Manon coming in uh, with her experience and working with a team and all the Verizon consumer employees that uh, are so important to us. So uh, it's an important date for that. Uh, but again, it's part of the way we're doing things in succession planning and all of that. And so I couldn't be happier with this next step for both of them and both of them are ready for it. So I wanted to share that with all the V-teamers uh, today. So you will have it the first hand as this uh, information is going out to all our stakeholders that of course are excited over that as well. Uh, and when it comes to Verizon, everything is important. We're the leader, and we just need to continue to be that. So, Andy, that was a couple of things around people, organization. Oh, just a couple of things. Yeah, it was a couple of things, hey, yeah. I, I, there's some love here in the Twitter chat for Ronan <laughs> and, and Manon, and I just want to take a moment, since we're all in the room, just a, uh, just a big round of applause for our leadership.
So we've got, we've got Q&A, of course, as we always do during our leadership uh, up to speeds. And I think what I'm going to do here is uh, let folks know, if you've got a question, drop it into uh, live at verizon.com. That's our question inbox. You can always, I'm watching the Twitter chat as well. Uh, but, uh, but once again, um, thank you to Ronan and congratulations to Manon. Um, there's a question here that I was hoping Craig may be able to answer uh, before. Oh, uh, let's we, see. Before we, uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Craig, I just wanted to see, I know that there have been reports about um, the FAA-related yep. delays with C-Ban, and was yep. hoping you can kind of shed some light on sort of what's going on with that, because we are seeing some headlines here and there in the news. Sure, happy to, Andy. That's a great question. I know it's on people's minds. So first thing to know is there's a small number of people working on this. For all the rest of you, it's not something you need to be distracted by. Right? Things are on track. We're, we're in good shape. But... You know, what is this about? So I know often when we talk about spectrum, it, it feels a little complicated and esoteric and, and abstract. So let me try and explain this in a way that we're all familiar with. So you know, when you get in your car and you turn on your radio, you may go to FM 92.3, right? Or then you change it to FM 93.9. And what's happening there is a radio station is broadcasting on a certain frequency and your radio is picking it up. In fact, those numbers in the FM stations, the uh, 92.3 is actually 92.3 megahertz. That's the frequency that they, uh, that they broadcast on. So two things have to happen to you listen to that station. The broadcast station has to have a license from the Federal Communications Commission to broadcast. They have the exclusive right to broadcast in that spectrum band. The second thing is you have to have a radio that picks up that signal and is able to distinguish that signal from all the signals around it because there's lots and lots of users all the way up and down the, the spectrum, um, the spectrum the kind of array. And most of us have radios where you just plug in 92.3 and it goes right there and it's crystal clear. But some of you may remember back in the old days when you had those dial radios and you would turn it and you'd hear the signal get a little stronger and then a little weaker. And sometimes you hear a little crosstalk and you'd kind of have to fiddle with the knob to get it just right there so it's listening to the signal. Right? So now let's, let's zoom up past you know, 103.5 hits FM or whatever it is, up to you know, 3,700 megahertz. And that's the spectrum that the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, has licensed us and AT&T and later on T-Mobile to, to broadcast in. And you go further, actually quite a bit further up, and call it channel 4,200. The Federal Aviation Administration, that's the FAA that Andy referred to, is using some spectrum up in that area. And what they've said is, hey, we get that FCC has told Verizon, AT&T, and TMO they can use the spectrum. That's all cleared. But we actually aren't sure if we have some old equipment that's kind of the equivalent of those old dial radios where you say, you know, maybe they need to be upgraded a little bit just to make sure that they, uh, that they work well as you continue to have stuff uh, going side by side in the spectrum. So main things for you know is first, this is not a new issue. This has been talked about for years and years and years. Uh, the Federal Communications Commission has an entire division of spectrum engineers. This is all they do. They look at spectrum interference issues, make sure everything works together. They spent years studying this before they decided to put the C-band spectrum out to auction. So this has been well, well studied. And in fact, 40 countries around the world are already using these two bands, one for cellular communications, one for aviation. So there's lots and lots of real world data out there. So that's the first thing for you to know is that lots of data, this has been well studied, this is, this is nothing new. The second thing is that it's very, very common for the incumbents in a certain spectrum band to complain about others coming in next to them. And you know, that's okay, it's kind of human nature. You know, think about it that you live in an apartment building and the unit next to you is empty. You kind of say, you know, I kind of like having the unit next to me empty. I don't want, you know, someone moves in, maybe they play music at night or maybe they have little kids that run around to make noise and I have to filter that out. And so, you know, you kind of bug the landlord and say, hey, you know, fill the other units first. Don't put someone next to me. And you may figure if you, you know, if you, you complain enough, maybe the landlord will fill other units before they fill the one next to you. Or maybe if you complain enough, maybe the landlord will give you a break off your rent just to kind of make you go away. So it's human nature. So these things are talked about a lot. Every time there's a new use of a spectrum band, the incumbents tend to say, hey, 
uh, you know, are there going to be issues? And there's a process in Washington where the different agencies get together and generally work it out behind the scenes. Uh, this time it was a little harder because of the three agencies that work it out, two of them actually don't have people confirmed by the Senate to lead them, so it's been a little harder to get the, the right team together to fix it. So that's what's going on. When that leads to, to last week, what happens is the Federal Aviation Com Administration said, hey, look, we have just asked our industry to just provide us information about their equipment just to see if there's anything out there that needs to be upgraded. We're just not sure how much time we have because we know that Verizon and AT&T, you guys are authorized to start uh, using these services as of December 5th, but we don't actually know when you're gonna start doing it. Because remember, we have not announced our commercial launch. So he said, we just have a lot of questions and we don't know how much time we have and that's a little uncertainty. So we just said, hey, got that. You know what, we'll give you some certainty. We're still not announcing our, when our launch is, right? We have not announced it. We just said, we'll tell you what, here's what we can tell you. It's not gonna be before the beginning of January of next year. And so you have a little more time and we'll make, you know, give time for the engineers to talk to each other and, and provide the data. And so that's what you saw in the news last week was us just saying, hey, we haven't announced our commercial launch. We'll give you a little certainty that it won't be before early January. And that gives your engineers a little time to work out. And, and if anyone in the aviation industry kind of needs to do any upgrades to, to their equipment, you know, they, they kind of have time to do the research on that. But we are authorized to, to launch our, our spectrum. We have all the authority we need. So the main thing is, what does this mean for you? Other than maybe reading a few things in the press clips, nothing at all. If you're building the networks, keep building the networks. If you're planning the C-band launch, keep planning the C-band launch. If you're serving customers, this doesn't affect anything we're doing today. Keep serving those customers and we're not announcing when we're gonna do the C-band launch. We haven't announced it. I will tell you this, Diego and the marketing team know when it is. They have a plan, and when it's time to announce, we're gonna hear about it. It's gonna be super exciting, so stay tuned. Right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Greg. Very much. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. I, I, I like that one. Thank you. Hey, by, by the way, Hans, um, so 92.3 yeah. in New York here is the alternative uh, rock uh, <laughs> Stations. That, that's, so. that's me. It's a little it's glimpse into yeah, Craig's exactly. playlist. Yeah, exactly. That's I just subliminally I went immediately to alt rock. <laughs> yes. <you know>? Yes. <laughs> um, so thank you, thank Craig. You, Craig. And lots yeah. of love here for that explanation here on Twitter. Very well explained. Thanks for that clarification. It is important to get this baseline. I think there are so many moments like this where there's an opportunity for all of us to keep learning. Yeah to continue learning. That's what this forum is all about, of course, and that's what Up to Speed is all about. So with a few minutes left before we close, uh, Hans, your, your thoughts on how we can continue to lead in, you know, in both as a group and uh, individually as well. No, I think that we, we talk a lot about that. Uh, uh, we, we have a very important year in front of us and it, it comes down to all of us. Uh, to take the accountability. It starts with me uh, to take my accountability for what, what I'm doing, how I'm executing, and how I drive Verizon forward. But it comes down to all of us. And I think that's what we're talking about here with the leaders, and, uh, and we should be talking in the whole organization. It comes down to us because we can make a difference, and V-Teamers has always made a difference. And this is, uh, we have a chance in a lifetime uh, in front of us. Uh, we have built this Verizon 2.0, and where we are right now, uh, could it be more exciting? for the moment that we are into and the assets we have and the units we have created, consumer and business and with the support of our technology and IT group, couldn't be more excited how we built it together and what we're doing with our strategy right now. And, uh, and of course, it's more competition, but you know, that's how it is when, all, when you're in an industry that is important. I usually say that the 21st uh, centuries infrastructure is mobility broadband and cloud because everything is going to be connected. We are in the middle of it and we are the leader in it. I mean, couldn't be a better industry to be into, couldn't be a better sort of assets to have to execute on that. So that's sort of how I see it. Yeah, thank you very much, Hans. And, and I, you mentioned this morning about accountability yeah. being very important. And, and I think that's something that all of us should be thinking about. It starts and ends with us in either personal ways or professional ways. There's a lot to think about. Uh, talk to us about that accountability for all no, of us. No, I think that accountability comes also that we have very clear plans where we're going from. And I think the work we have done from in Verizon 2.0, all the way from what we want to preserve, strengthen, how we want to have the strategy, how we're going to measure it over five years, and then break it down to the yearly targets that we're going to uh, do right now and we're discussing here with the leaders, that is going to be our operation excellence because we have all the way set up and now the accountability comes for having those targets set and understanding how you 
Every V-teamer is part of delivering that result to be a better company and continue to succeed in, for all our stakeholders. That's the accountability we're looking for, and that's what we need to have from all the leaders, but also all the V-teamers. Excellent. Hans, thank you very much. I'm glad the invite got to your mailbox today. It's always great to have you. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it happens, sometimes not. But I'm happy that you invited me. I'm well, really happy. Well, it's always a privilege and a pleasure to be working with our leaders today. It's great to see so many of you uh, in person. And once again, um, a big thank you and congratulations to Ronan and Manon. Yeah. And Craig, thank you very much. And as Craig mentioned, that Paul survey is very important to all of our leaders. Um, so a big thank you to all of you uh, out there. Uh, thank you for watching Up to Speed. Leaders, we'll be back with you in about half an hour at one o'clock so we'll see you on blue jeans uh, but uh, for our entire uh, v team uh, family here thanks so much for watching and until next time should we all say it together until next time up to speed up to speed there it is hey <laughs>